Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to another edition of the Basement Academy. Today's Wednesday, May the 5th. Glad that you've taken a few moments out of your day to listen or watch, uh, depending on how you are experiencing this. Uh, pray that uh, a few moments of reflection around a psalm, uh, some scriptures, and uh, some reflection on the Christian life uh, will be helpful to you. Uh, the morning psalm, again, is one of my favorites, Psalm 65. I've got the first few lines of this memorized. I'll read it, lest I stumble uh, on camera. But uh, a great, it's a sweet little psalm. This is for the director of music. It says it's a psalm of David. It's a song. Praise await you, O God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who, who, who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who form the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Those living far away fear your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Psalm 65. Begins with the blessing of being the chosen people. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. The blessing of forgiveness. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. So this joy of God's grace, of being welcomed, of being included, of being forgiven uh, and, and restored into relationship. And so it's kind of this spiritual blessing and then goes into a reflection on God the Creator, uh, formed the mountains by your power, stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, I think when Jesus calms uh, the waves, I think there's an illusion going on here, demonstrating his power uh, as the creator. But it says he stills the turmoil of the nations also. Oh, may it be so, Lord. May it be so. Uh, this beautiful poetic line, those living far away, fear your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. And then a sweet, poetic reflection on the blessing of the land. God caring for the land, watering it. Uh, today's a rainy day, and so this blessing the crops, blessing the land. Uh, may it be so. And so the, the, the image here is of God's care and provision for his people, <clears throat> though they have seen great hardship and will see hardship again, and so shall we. God cares, he provides, he is present. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple, and we are filled with the goodness of his spirit. And so I pray that his spirit will strengthen you, and as we take a few moments to um, contemplate the house of mourning again, some notes from the house of mourning as we continue reflecting upon my mother's life, not, not so much her death, but her life, uh, and the life of my uh, father as well as that generation passes. Um, so, so as we go through uh, 
the personal effects and belongings of my parents. Um, it's not just my mother's belongings at this point, obviously. Um, well, when we moved mom into our house a little over three years ago, uh, she fell and broke her hip at the end of 2017. And it, uh, it, was, it was unsustainable for her to live on her own anymore. So she came to live with us, <clears throat> living right upstairs. I've pointed there often. Um, well, all of the materials from her house, you know, we sold her house, moved her here. And so a lot of things have been in storage. And so there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 75 to 80 of these, you know, those plastic crates, those tubs, those storage tubs, you typically see them on sale after Christmas. Other items as well. There's been some furniture and we've donated a lot of our furniture to the uh, refugee families. And so that was a real joy uh, of hers as uh, ours as well. But we've been going through tub after tub after tub. <laughs> and it is really, uh, it's, it's been like a living time capsule uh, in, in so many ways. Um, m many of the items are, are newer um, that were just needed to be stored and, and gotten out of the way. But, but we, we came across a number of items that are from another era that there's just no other way to, to say it. They're just from another era. Um, we've found boxes and boxes of slides. Remember when it was slides, <laughs> not pictures, but, and so, uh, we've scanned those in and, and, and those, Hopefully it will be part of some of the display that we'll make at her service. Uh, there was a viewer. It was broken, but a slide viewer as well, which is interesting. An old slide rule of my father's, okay? And so I, I actually learned how to use that when I was a kid. Um, played a game. We didn't have calculators back then, right? And so the slide rule with its um, little marks and measures how you can calculate and compute. Um, there have been all manner of, my, my mother was very involved in uh, national, but, but more, more local uh, political efforts. And so political buttons and ribbons, we've got some I like Ike uh, buttons we've, we've come across. A framed William Jennings Bryan for president ribbon. So that, that goes back a few days, huh? Uh, number of military items of my father's uh, reflecting his service career. Um, videos, right? <laughs> Remember when we watched videos? <laughs> so a lot of VHS tapes. Um, and then we came across these little, so reel to reel tapes, not the big reel to reel, but it's cassette tapes, but they're reel to reel cassette tapes. And so there's what we would do when dad was deployed, uh, back in the sixties, he, uh, he was an executive officer, the XO of a, a ship and then he was the CEO, the commanding officer of a destroyer during the Vietnam era. And they would deploy. And so we would make these little recordings and then we would send them to dad. And they would get their uh, FPO, whatever it is. And then he would send a recording back. And so it would take, you know, weeks to, to get all this done. So we've talked about we need to go someplace and get these real to real tapes onto digital format so that we could uh, enjoy them. So I'm expecting, I'm going to hear, hi, I'm little Donnie. Hey, daddy, I, I, I had a, a hit in the baseball game today. <laughs> I expect it's going to be something like that, you know, and in probably some little kid's voice, because I was probably six, seven, eight years old, I think when, so that, that has been fascinating. Um, uh, kitchen gadgets, uh, some old kitchen gadgets, an old sifter, you know, you turn the thing and it, I think that's from my grandmother. I think it was my mother's mother. Um, so, uh, cards and letters and letters and cards. Um, beautiful. Uh, of course, what I've learned is they never threw anything away. <laughs> and some of you are like that. Okay. So stop it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Uh, one, one funny item, uh, they, they had a lock box <clears throat> and, you know, a couple of these, you know, yay by yay that you would have important papers in. Well, one was under lock and key and, and I couldn't find the key. And then I came across a bag of keys, little, a, a Ziploc bag that probably had, I don't know, 75 or a hundred keys in it. 
So every key to every car and anything they've ever owned, house, you know. And so found the key to the magic lockbox, opened it up, and I'm looking for some old, you know, AT&T stock or something like that, you know. Help me find a million dollar bill that my parents had hidden. And instead is a signed speech by Dan Quayle with some pictures of Dan Quayle. And I'm going, isn't that interesting? That's the thing that deserves to be in the important paper block box where you can't even find the key. So we had some fun with that. Uh, Frankie the Fish, this was a newer thing. We actually gave that to them back in the early 2000s. That old McDonald's commercial, give me back my filet fish give me that fish. <laughs> so we've been having fun playing that. So it's a time capsule. It's It's this, you know, entering a world... So, but I, I have to show one of these, okay? So, okay. It looks like an IED, like an improvised explosive device. I swear that's what it looks like. Or it looks like it might be the flux capacitor. You know, I don't want to turn that where you stick things in and, you know, the back to the future car. Here's the flux capacitor. We have one of those. But some of you will know what this is. If I can get this a little closer to the camera. It is an automatic vaporizer and humidifier. You put the water in here. This is the heating element. You plug it in. I'm afraid to plug it in. Afraid I'll blow the house up or this thing might explode. And then you put a little bit of, yes, friends, Vicks Vapo Rub. This thing. <laughs> you could open it up. It, ah, it still smells. And so you put a little bit of vapor rub, and then the steam goes over that. And you know, I'm the youngest of three. I, I remember that somewhere, maybe four or five, six years old or something. So this thing has been traveling. They probably moved, I don't know, eight or ten times since I was five years old. And uh, that thing made the move every time with them. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And so it's like this window to another era, in my parents' life. Uh, it's a little bit of a time travel experience that I'm going through, kind of a back to the future uh, in some ways, speaking of flux capacitors. But it's like archaeology. It's like a relational, personal, archaeological dig. I'm fascinated. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, though I confess to having a few eye rolls. It's like, why did you guys keep this? <laughs> um, but I'm glad they did. Um, because it, it gives a window, a snapshot into a life that was lived, right? Um, I'm glad she kept all her correspondence or they kept, probably mom did the keeping, right? Um, I actually wrote my parents. <laughs> I don't recall writing my parents, but several letters in college and then after college and, and really cool to see when I came to faith. And golly, I had this boldness telling my parents, read your Bible. You need to press on. We need to. And then, you know, Easter and Christmas messages, I would write a little letter or card and talking about, you know, what these holidays really mean. So it's really sweet. It's, it's, it's been, uh, wonderfully renewing uh, to me. <clears throat> there, there's a simplicity um, to it all. There's an honesty to it all, a humility, a wisdom in, in some ways. Um, you know, mom and dad were both born in 1930, and, and those were some hard scrabble years, uh, and, and they were both only children. Um, mom probably grew up in, in humbler means than, than dad did. But it reflects this era of frugality, right? And stewardship, you just don't throw things away. You never know when you're going to need it. You don't have all kinds of money to go up buy a new one. And so it, it, it reflects an era of frugality. Um, there, there's a thoughtfulness that is expressed, um, you, you see the other side of things. It's thank you cards. Commanding officers where my mother had baked a pie to one of my father's commanding officers. And, you know, he writes uh, in a, a sweet but, but thoughtful thank you note. Um, 
so it, 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 it reflects this, this archaeological dig, as it were, that we're going through, reflects the humanity of my parents and my mother in particular, who wrote and was thoughtful and did kind expressions of, of, of generosity and remembrance for others. Um, the, the vaporizer <laughs> reflects care, a, a maternal care and, and love for children. And, and then a, you never know when you're going to need it again. <laughs> and, and so um, there, there's so much here that is, is so sweet. Um, a lot of recognition, uh, little certificates of involvement. Uh, both my parents, my mother in particular, but both my parents were very active in civic affairs, uh, civic mindedness, which is, is a lost art uh, these days, uh, community affairs as volunteers, uh, you know, being uh, the, the call mother at Herndon High School. She was, you know, if people, students didn't show up on time, she would call to see if the student was sick or, you know, whatever it was. Um, she served on political committees. She served on charitable foundations. Um, she was the chair of the committee for the dedication of the new building at Pender Methodist Church over there in Fairfax. I frankly didn't know a lot of this. I knew she was involved and I knew she was a, a, a what we often call a professional volunteer because um, she did not work outside the home after um, she was married, a work for pay, but she absolutely labored inside the home, raising her family, but outside the home in so many different ways of, of civic and, and community involvement for which I'm so thankful. Um, so uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 speaks again to a family who's mourning and dancing, right? <laughs> um, and is recognizing the time to be born and a time to die. So these last couple days reflecting from Ecclesiastes 3. Well, let me read it again. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. So there's a time for everything, okay? So what I'm going through there's a time for this, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away. Ah, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And so it's this time to keep and a time to throw away that is has my attention uh, these last number of days. As we're going through the exercise of um, sorting out uh, through these belongings, the family is gathering next week. So today's Wednesday. The family starts to gather up next Wednesday uh, for uh, the funeral service that we'll have on Sunday or Saturday. I'm sorry, the 15th, Saturday the 15th. And and our thought, my wife and, and my thought, is to be able to have the family um, choose any number of items that they would wish to have for themselves. Um, some are keepsakes, some are correspondence, and so, you know, pictures where we're, we've got tubs where we're sorting old pictures or letters that, that, that are cards that the grandchildren may have sent. Well, those can go back with you and you can recall and reflect. And you can throw them away if you want, but we think it'd be appropriate to return to sender, um, as it were. And so each of these artifacts, and that's what I'm thinking about them. It's like a living time capsule. It's an archaeological dig. And so these are artifacts from a truly human life, a fully engaged human life, just in, in all. There, there's things on display. There's some foibles and faults. Some of the notes that we're coming across reflect times of sorrow and loss and frustration. 
um, disappointment. Uh, there's there's a lot of gratitude and 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 sweet expressions of of love and faith. But they're artifacts, and artifacts are a link to a past, linked to a story, linked to a civilization, a society, a community, in our case, a family. And, and in some ways, you know, these artifacts, this, this vaporizer, <laughs> they tell a story. And, and that's the piece that has caught my attention. Um, they, they become somewhat of an icon uh, an icon in certain religious traditions is a physical object through which the worshiper, uh, the believer, has an experience of grace. Uh, and so if you've ever been in a Roman Catholic church or uh, an Eastern Orthodox church, you, you know, the, the decorations, the painting and, and the objects. And so um, our Protestant Presbyterian understanding moves a little in a different direction, but but I understand it. And so icons and, and kind of a sacramental approach to life that a physical object, bread or juice or water, can be a means of grace, a physical object that, that can be and speak to an invisible, so a visible sign of an invisible reality. And so I'm kind of thinking of these artifacts in, in such a way um, that these are somewhat as icons, as, as sacramental means of grace, a window through which I can reflect upon God's grace to me and to my family uh, through my mother and father in particular, and then generations, because we've come across some generational realities. Letters from my grandfather, who was in World War I, uh, Grandpa Meeks, uh, Roy Leland Meeks, letters from him to his family. Um, but the scripture says that there is a time to keep and a time to throw away. And that's where the rub comes, right? Do we just keep everything and just put everything back in the bins and leave it for another generation? You know, add our things to the bins so that when Krista and I are gone, our kids now have not only grandma and grandpa Meeks, <laughs> And uh, that, that is my grandparents, their great-grandparents, and then, uh, you know, my parents, and then us. So, so is that what it is that we just pile? Because that's how, what often happens. It's sediment, right? <laughs> and so in the archaeological dig, there's often these sedimentary layers. And, and so is that what we do? And that's a little bit of what we're looking at. There are a couple generations of of items that, that are somewhat in a, in a layer, a sedimentary layer of these uh, icons, there is a time to throw away. And so we're engaging in that difficult work. Um, for me, it's somewhat therapeutic, to be honest with you, but the difficult work of throwing away, of discerning what stays, what goes. And we're not doing this completely independently, but we are reviewing and where there's clearly you know, these are pictures of nobody knows who these are in the family. We're just going to let those go. Where there are newspaper clippings that are kind of random editorial things, you know, we'll keep some of those so the family can see, but, but on the whole, we're, we are tossing some things out. But, but so, so it's this, this, this work, this, this, this challenging work. And so Krista and I have done this several times this past week. We actually will kind of lay our hands on something. There are notebooks, you know, from timeshares that have been sold, so so they're not they're not in the family anymore. But they reflect something. They reflect family gatherings and so um we we've actually physically laid our hands on these, offered a prayer of gratitude and thanks for the joy that this represented in our lives. May that joy somehow multiply and continue through the generations and then we blessedly throw away. <laughs> we, you know, into the trash bin it goes. Um, and, and so thinking about this work of throwing away, trying to turn it into a holy expression, to not have it just be, ah, you know, it, it is therapeutic in the sense of just creating some order and just working things through and, and taking some of our grieving energy, kind of the, the, the nervous energy of grief, 
and allowing it to uh, find some expression. But to see this as an act of relinquishment, of opening our hands, of surrendering, of a rec- there is a time to throw away. There's a time to keep, and, and we're going to keep a lot, trust me. But there is a time to throw away, to surrender this item, this object over, to, to hand it over, to, to yield. Um, and it, it involves some loss. It involves some grief, right? I mean, it, it, the, the very act of relinquishing. We've had to relinquish mom, <laughs> unto the Lord. And that's what the funeral service does. We commend unto Almighty God, our, uh, his servant, Jacqueline Marshall Meeks. And so um, there is, it, it is a grief-like work, the act of relinquishing, relinquishing a past. I'm 60 now. I'm not five. I'm not 10. I'm not 20. I'm not 30. I'm seeing pictures from those ages in my life, but I am not that. And so this act of relinquishing, I, I am 60. I, I'm, I'm a big boy now. I'm not that little kid. I'm, I, I've grown up. And, and so kind of negotiating the memories, right? And, and, and there's all kinds of emotions. And you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. I, I trust you know what I'm talking about. And so there is this, um, th- there's a, a measure of faith that is required, a measure of hope and love that is required to do this work. This, the, this work of relinquishing. And so it's a holy act. And so in the, in the time to keep and a time to throw away, I, I recognize we're in such a time, but there's this, I have to trust God will provide for me. I can let go of that physical object and know that he will provide for me. You know, mom and dad could have thrown this away some years ago and have believed that in the event of another bronchitis or whatever it was that got them using that for their children. If it ever happened, then, you know, God would provide a medicine or some other mechanism by which um, comfort could be offered. And so there is a sense of God, you will provide, you will sustain, you will watch over. But I think the bigger relinquishing is if I let go of this link in the chain of the story, Am I going to remember the story? That's why we hold on to things because it's the, 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 it's a it's a living link. Here's a connection, a physical connection to a time gone by or a relationship that is, you know, a, a person, a loved one who has died, and that's it. So it requires enormous emotional fortitude. We have realized to do this. Now, a lot of folks can just go in there and just toss things out, and they're not thinking. At, it, at the level I am. I, I'm just this goofy, right? I'm a kind of a philosopher, a contemplative. I'm a monk in, in some ways, and I think about these things at such a level. But, but I am thinking about it at this level. And so these are some notes from the house of mourning that I'm going through. <clears throat> and everybody who goes through this has this dilemma, what do you keep, what do you throw? And I just want to bring every thought captive to obedience to Christ, as the scripture says. I want to make this act of keeping and throwing away a holy expression of my faith and and to do so with gratitude and believe because I want the blessings to continue. I want the blessings of my parents and the generations to continue into my life and through my life into the life of my children and by God's grace, grandchildren, so that what is kept is kept in such a way that it is understood to be part of this larger story of faith, hope, and love that gladly my parents and grandparents were a part of. I, I have the blessing of being part of a godly family. That um, both my grandparents um, were married until death did them part. My parents were married until death did them do them part. And, and by God's grace, my wife and I will stay married. And, and so this, this blessing of, of families that love each other and that go the distance and, and, and are active in their church community and, and faithful followers of Jesus, this is, this is what we're trying to be about. So these are some notes from the house of mourning. There is a time to keep and a time to throw away. And uh, 
as you engage in that holy act of relinquishing in your life in whatever manner, in whatever season, I pray that you would make it a, a holy expression of relinquishing and a yielding unto God and a trusting Him to keep your story strong uh, and connected to the larger story of faith. So let's take a moment to pray. Our Lord, we do thank you for these living links that we experience to the past. Typically a generation or two or three at most, uh, the items that are passed down, the heirlooms, give us great wisdom in our family when it's our time now to keep and throw away. And pray for all the families uh, who are uh, listening, who are watching, who are reflecting upon this with me, that there may be uh, a blessing of faith, hope, and love uh, that extends to the generations. And how we thank you uh, for the frugality, the wisdom, the humility, the humanity of our parents and our parents' uh, parents and our forebears uh, who, who lived in, a, in a, a less abundant time than we do now in America. Um, help us to live with gratitude. Help us to live with wisdom. Help us to live with humility. But most importantly, a faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of the generations, <clears throat> the God of our uh, fathers and mothers and those who've come before, may the God who's loved them love you and, and unto the generations to come. And so may that God bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen.